Well, hello everyone. How are we this week? How are you keeping? Let me hear you. How are you? Ah, great. I'm glad to hear some of you are having a really good time. Maybe you're glad to be back at school, if you're back at school. Um, my name is Chris Wilson uh, and I'm the assistant at First Portland On. And it's my great privilege to be in front of the camera this week and to, to share with you as we begin our new series, Looking at God's Promises. I want to begin by asking you a question. I'm going to ask you a few questions and I want you to really shout out and, and let me know your answers. The first question is, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Oh, some of you are saying you're not so sure. Some of you are saying, yes, of course you do. Well, to be fair, if you don't really know me, I don't blame you for not trusting me. You don't know what I'm like. Um, but for those of you who do know me, hopefully you said yes. Hopefully you know that um, you can trust me. Um, I have three little boys, Joshua, Caleb and Teddy, and they know me, they know that I love them, uh, and they know that if I ask them to, to jump off from a big tall uh, wall or from a big rock, that they would do it because they would trust that I would catch them. They know me, uh, and so they trust me. And the Bible tells us lots of stories, many stories about God and about how he can be trusted to keep his promises. Our God is a faithful God. He always keeps his promises. And it's a good thing the Bible tells us this because the reality is that so often we forget who God is and we, we don't trust him. We don't think that we can trust God to keep his promises. Sometimes we just don't think that God can keep his promises. And sometimes the people around us don't really know that either. We begin to question God. We don't know what God is like. When we don't really know God, we find it difficult to trust him. We'll wonder, is God strong enough? Does God care enough? We don't, when we don't know God, we find it difficult to trust him. This week, we want to spend some time uh, looking at a story that took place a long time ago about a man who trusted God because he knew God. And you can probably tell from the background who I'm talking about. But our story takes place a long time ago. And in those days, there, the people had filled the earth, but so had sin. In those days, the world was in a real mess because everybody did whatever they wanted. They sinned all the time. Things were bad all the time. They were doing bad things all the time. And the world was filled with death and disease and destruction. And this made, made God incredibly sad. The perfect world that he had made was now in a mess. So God decided to act. And in those days, there was a man named Noah. And Noah wasn't like anybody else who lived on the earth. Noah knew God and he trusted God and he loved God. Noah was God's friend. God knew Noah and Noah knew God. God loved Noah and Noah loved God. Noah was God's friend. One day God told Noah about his plan to make the world a better place. God was going to send a great big flood that would cover the whole earth. And this water was going to wash away all the problems, all the disease, all the death, all the sin in the world. God was going to make the world new again. He was going to give the world a new beginning. But this meant that God was going to have to destroy everything in the world that was there because it was wrong and messed up. But God promised that even as he was going to destroy the world, he was going to keep Noah and his family safe. So God told Noah to build a boat. God had a plan to keep Noah and his family safe. God had a plan to keep his promise. And that plan was to, for Noah to build a boat and God was going to keep him safe on that boat. Now I've got a question for you. I wonder if you lived in a land where it never rained. I know that's hard to believe. And if you lived on a mountain far away from water, would you ever think to build a boat? Why would you build a boat when there's no need for it? There's no water about to sail on. Well, lots of people thought that Noah was a bit strange for building a boat. But Noah knew God and Noah trusted God. And Noah did exactly as God said. Noah built the boat and the animals came. And then when everybody was safely on board the boat, God shut the door to keep the people safe. And then the storm came. And this great big boat on top of this mountain suddenly became very small in the midst of this massive amount of water and this massive storm that, that pushed and tossed the boat about. The, the world was covered with water. The world was covered in a great big storm 
and only Noah and his animals and his family were safely aboard this tiny little boat. I have another question for you. I wonder if you, how you would have felt if you were on that boat. If you'd been on that boat, how would you have felt? A tiny little you in this big ocean of water and storm, how would you have felt? I think I would have been quite scared. I'm sure you would have too. But in the middle of the storm, Noah trusted God. Noah trusted God to keep his promises. God had promised to keep Noah safe and Noah believed that he would. Noah trusted in God and trusted in his promises, even when it seemed strange and impossible. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and finally the rain stopped and eventually the waters went down and the boat finally landed upon a mountain and Noah and his family and all the animals left the boat. Noah thanked God for keeping him safe and keeping his promise and the animals and the people filled the earth again. Whenever I think about Noah, I think about what he was asked to do. He was asked to do some really strange things. He was asked to build a boat in the middle of nowhere where there was no water. He was asked to sleep in a boat filled with animals, wild animals that could easily have eaten him. But he trusted God, trusted God to keep him safe during the biggest storm the world had and would ever see. Each time Noah trusted God. Noah knew God and so he trusted God. I wonder whenever you hear the story of Noah, what do you think about? Maybe you think about the boat, maybe you think about all the animals, maybe you wonder how there was enough food for all the animals. Or maybe you think about this, about the rainbow. We know the rainbow is a sign of God's promises to never flood the world again. God had promised to keep Noah safe and then God made another promise. He promised he would never destroy the world again by a flood. He promised that he would love his people forever. But I want you to look at the rainbow and look at the, the shape of the rainbow. If we look closer it looks a little bit like a warrior's bow that he would shoot arrows from. And if we look at it, we look at where it's pointed, it's pointed up towards God. It isn't pointed down at God, or it isn't pointed down at, God, at the people. It isn't pointed down at, towards the earth. It's pointed up towards God. And God was saying whenever he hung that bow in the sky that he wouldn't destroy the world. But he's also saying that instead of destroying anger, uh, destroying sin in his anger against the world, no, he would destroy, the, destroy sin and death. He would exert his anger on his son, Jesus. You see, Whenever we look at the bow that God hung in the sky, we should think about the cross. It's a reminder that God promised one day to send a rescuer who would deal with our sin, who would save us, his people. At the cross, God shows that he's just because he destroys sin, but he also shows that he's great and loving and kind and keeps his promises because Jesus takes the punishment for our sins. God put his anger not upon us but upon Jesus. At the cross we show we see that God shows that he keeps his promises and as we talk to God and listen to him we will see that he is the only one who will really we can really trust with our lives every day and every way because we can trust him to love us and do what's best for us. At the cross God shows us that he what he's really like and he invites us to walk with him and live for him every day. At the cross, we remember that God always keeps his promises. His, it, he, he shows that he's powerful, caring, and that he loves us. God shows that we can trust him, and he shows that we must trust him. As our memory verse re, uh, reminds us, that God always keeps his promises in Jesus. Every one of God's promises is yes and amen in Jesus and what he's done for us. Thank you so much for listening and hope to see you again soon. Take care.